This is my 2017 Intel MacBook Pro. It's almost seven years now since its release, and this MacBook is no longer receiving any Mac OS updates. The last update was macOS Ventura and it's completely destroyed my Mac. Don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan of macOS and it runs much better on newer Macs. However, the older the Mac gets, macOS updates will degrade the performance and the experience will become very laggy. Then I decided to switch to Linux and succeeded installing KDE Neon which comes with Plasma 6 and guess what, the experience was outstanding. KDE Plasma 6 is a brand new desktop environment for Linux distributions. It's currently available with only a few distros and KDE Neon is the first one to offer the all new Plasma 6 experience. So if you have an old MacBook and struggling with latest macOS updates, try installing Linux with Plasma 6 and you are good to go. Now this video is not about installing KDE Neon on a Mac, rather I wanted to share my bare metal experience with Linux running on an Intel MacBook Pro. I will be posting a step-by-step -step installation video very soon, so stay tuned for more updates. Anyway, as you can see, I have dual booted macOS and KDE Neon. Initially, I decided to get rid of macOS completely, but I do need it for a reason, so I thought dual booting would work fine for me. The first thing I noticed after switching to Linux is that my Mac boots up in just a few seconds and I'm ready to get started working. The boot time of Linux is much faster than macOS. But thanks to their lightweight nature, Linux distros boot faster than Windows and macOS. Alright, let me go ahead and log in with Wayland. This is the all-new Plasma 6 that looks gorgeous on the Retina display. KDE Neon is a fantastic Linux distribution based on Ubuntu that offers the latest and greatest KDE software experience. Now let me quickly show you the system details using NeoFetch and this is the idle RAM usage of the MacBook. The floating panel in Plasma 6 is kind of like the dock in macOS and it's highly customizable. By right clicking on the panel, you can enter editor mode. This gives you full control to customize the panel, including parameters to change its look, size and position. Now using the position setting, you can easily move the panel to the left, top, right or bottom. Now compared to Mac OS dock, panels in Plasma 6 are highly customizable. The main thing I really like about KDE Plasma 6 is the only touchpad gestures and workspaces that are something similar to Mac OS. With Plasma 6, KDE has combined the overview and desktop grid effects into a single entity. So swiping up with four fingers takes you to the overview mode and swiping up again takes you to the desktop grid. Now swiping left or right with three fingers switches between workspaces. Now these gestures are battery smooth, in fact much better than macOS and well implemented. The Plasma 6 brings a brand new settings application that is easier to use. All the settings are elegantly organized into sections with relevant controls. For example, the input and output section has controls related to the mouse, keyboard, sound and more. The connected devices section is related to output devices, while the appearance and style section allows you to change wallpapers, fonts and apply themes. Additionally, the nightlight settings have been improved. KDE Neon comes with apt package manager to install any app or package easily with one step. For instance, setting up MySQL server is very easy using the built-in package manager and can be set up in a few seconds. Now, this is the best thing about Linux compared to Mac OS.
Also, the Discover App Store offers a simple user interface to install GUI applications. I also tried running large language models locally on Linux using Olama, and guess what? It performed very well compared to Mac OS. Large models like Llama 2 ran very well with the cost of system resources. The only thing I noticed was the CPU fan running at higher RPMs because these LLMs require full processing power to fasten the tokenization, which is completely obvious. Now compared to macOS, battery backup in Linux is not bad. I'm using auto CPU frequency, which is a perfect tool that improves battery life without making any compromises. It's also known as an automatic CPU speed and power optimizer for Linux based on active monitoring of a laptop's battery state, CPU usage, temperatures, and system load. Now this tool helps me to squeeze extra battery life by enabling the power saving mode. This way, the CPU is underclocked and it's very good to use if you're not working with graphics-intensive applications. You can use Turbo Boost by enabling Performance Mode for peak performance. Now let's talk about the box in Linux. One of the major issues that I have with Linux on MacBooks is with the speakers and microphone. After installing KDE Neon, the speakers and microphone are not working as intended. I tried to install the audio drivers, but for some reason, I could not install them. Another issue that I had with my Mac is the sleep off death issue. When I put the Mac into sleep mode, it shuts down unexpectedly, forcing to reboot. Then I tried editing the grub configuration file by adding arguments to this line, but the issue persists for no reason. Now these are the two major bugs I encountered with KDE Neon on my Intel MacBook Pro. Overall, I would say the bare metal experience with KDE Plasma 6 on my old Mac is next level. I will be using it for quite some time and eventually I will try to fix the speakers down the road. If in case you know how to fix them, do let me know in the comment section down below. If you want to see a full installation video of Linux on old MacBooks, please give a big thumbs up. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. This has been KSKRIO. I will see you in the next one.